I got the upgraded hook assembly into this machine and everything seems to be functioning okay. Some people have mentioned in assorted online forums that these things are noisy and while that they certainly can be there really isn't any reason for this model to be noisier than others and since it's a rotary hook machine it should actually be quieter the hook itself does not reverse direction so there's that extra clicking that isn't going to happen uh, in normal operation the only thing the hook comes in contact with is the thread so there isn't much room for there but a lot of the noise complaints do center around the hook area of the machine well the needle plate is held in place with these two spring tabs and then this pin just drops down into a hole so it has not been secured in place with screws and if there is any sort of drag in the slots it's going to rattle up and down slightly one thing you want to make certain of is that there is no lint buildup on the feed dogs when you look at the dogs themselves plate slides in drops down it's got that locating pin to hold it in place the slot in the needle plate is not excessively large this one I found that when they're properly centered you will generally get somewhere between five and seven thousandths of clearance on both sides of the feed elements. This is a five thousandths gauge. It fits freely. It can be wedged in there, but there is some pretty heavy drag. actually kind of tight so it's probably somewhere between five and seven now if it's off to one side or the other it's going to hit the edge it's going to pop this plate up and down and you're going to have some noise should that occur what you need to do is loosen these two screws slightly and nudge the plate or the dogs rather, back and forth until they align properly with the plate. Put this back in.
The other major source of noise from here is this follower. It tends to drop down. If the noise bothers you and you're not using the zigzag function, you can put a disc on here that has shallower ramps. I believe there's a three-stitch zigzag that functions a little bit smoother. I'm going to run this belt off. I use a cheap plastic syringe with a long needle tube to do most of my lubricating. One of the things you do have to watch with this class of machine is that the bobbin is actually fully seated and the case is latched properly in place. A lot of the people who talk about needle strikes from using the wrong size needles, if you examine the bobbin case you'll see that they actually hit in areas that could only catch a needle strike if the case popped loose. It's a design flaw on here, it works okay if you've got good cases and you make sure they're latched in place you probably won't have any problem using 15 by 1 needles with the stock case. I use a cutaway 20U case just to make sure that I have no issue with needle strikes. Okay, this see that along with the normal bearing surfaces you've got a yoke and cam here, a yoke and cam here, a yoke with a sliding block here. You can lube those with sewing machine oil and as long as you're lubing everything consistently they're not going to be a problem. But there is a tiny amount of clearance for each of these and sewing machine oil just doesn't have the viscosity to fill that gap and cushion the slop. So what I'm going to do is add there we go, a tiny dab of grease. That is actually a little too much. What you're looking for on these surfaces, if you're greasing them, is a dab of grease about the size of a sesame seed. 
anything more than that all it does is attract dirt and when you add abrasive dirt to grease you get something that closely simulates valve grinding compound so yes you want just the minimum thin film of lubrication there Good. Now, here we have a screw for dropping the feed dogs. Back that off, and at that point, if you crank, it does not lift the feed dogs above the plate. This is nice if you're doing embroidery or freehand work. What you have here is a set screw for how far down the dogs drop. I'm sure there are appropriate guidelines in the manual for adjusting that. You'll notice on this model there isn't a whole lot to lubricate down here on the bottom end. Personally, I think that's a good thing. does not have the usual screw-in pivot points on the end of the rods. This end is greased. I believe we can put a little drop of oil on there. And that pretty much does that. I normally lubricate from the bottom up. That way you don't have oil you put in the top side dripping out when you turn it over to get at the bottom. Just it's the way it works best for me. Okay, all those shafts have loop boards. This is a screw hole. It doesn't need to be lubed. These two are screw holes. This is oil ports. This is an oil port. These two are screw holes. Here, here, and on the back side, this one normally hides underneath the motor, so it's often neglected. There we go. Top side.
little spider web. Normally, there isn't much reason to poke around in here. Here we have the gear that is driven off a worm gear on the main shaft and rotates the cams. see that this gear is pretty dry and that would be where this oil hole drops on there. What I'm going to do is use white singer grease here you've got there's one oil hole there's the other oil hole and it lubricates where it rides on this shaft. It looks like it has a collar and set screw here which could be loosened to pull the shaft out and let it pop up from the top. And then we have the return spring here. Now the cam force coming up does a pretty good job of swinging the needle bar in one direction and it needs some return force to bring it back and it looks like that spring is really not particularly necessary but it's there and might as well leave it. When I have this open, I'm going to put a little drop of oil right there, and right there, and there, there. Okay. Now, that lets you see, we have lube hole here, lube hole here, lube hole here, which drops down here and feeds both of these down below, and a lubricant hole over here on the far left. Well, now, it's kind of difficult to see, you have the lubricant hole here on the back side for that shaft, and there's one up here on the front, in behind the cam, that is easily overlooked. do want to be careful not to over lubricate especially oil here but oil here as well because you have the belt right here and the original is a cord 
deal with cleats crimped onto it and oil does tend to rot cordage so that's just a thing on the back side you've got the top one for that shaft you've got point for the pivot here. We've got a sliding block in the zigzag regulator that gets a little dab of grease. This came originally with a light that would hang out on the bar here. That was the mounting screw. It had one of those little big light shields on it that break all too easily and uh, I took it off because they also had a reputation for heating up this part of the harp to the point where if you reached through to access the presser foot lever you could burn yourself and uh, yeah that's no fun no fun at all put this cover back on right away These don't need to be reefed down super tight. This is basically a dust cover. As is this piece back here. It does tend to accumulate excess oil in this area and I suppose it doesn't hurt to wipe it off before it has a chance to build up and land on whatever you're stitching. front section there's a hole here that allows lubrication of that top pivot point. Okay. There's a loophole here. Here. There is a guide here. So bushing on the top side, and there is a bushing on the bottom end. There is a wear area for the presser foot bar there, and there is on the top end that also guides it. And 
of course, the spring. You don't generally want to over loop this because the oil does drip down. But you really don't want to leave it totally bone dry either, so I tend to over lube and then wipe off the excess. This, I believe, is an expansion screw to take up wear. And in here, you have the needle bar set screw. When I was stitching some thicker fabric, I noticed it was skipping on the far right end of the zigzag, which will sometimes happen if the loop has not had time to form before the hook comes past it. Uh, I may have to lower the needle bar just a hair in order to take care of that. I'm going to try it later with some of the heaviest material I intend to be stitching and I'll make a separate video on that if necessary. But yeah, that pretty much covers the front end. They make special little sewing machine brushes to get down into all these tight spots. And if I wanted to get it super spiffy, I would actually go looking for one of them. But at this point, it's really not all that critical as long as you get most of the crap out. Good.